Hello, everybody. My name is Christopher Saunders, and this is the Connecticut Sports Talent Show, where we talk all things talent in Connecticut. And on today's show, I'm pleased to have a former Bunnell High School football player, but now doing great things at Anna Maria College, Armstrong Antoine, who's a senior. He's a defensive back, mainly a free safety, a talented player, and he's got quite the story to be able to share. Armstrong, it's great to be able to have you on. I appreciate you. Thanks for having me today. You know, I think obviously a lot of people may be wondering, oh, you know, you go to the college route, real, you know, because typically I'm dealing with the high school players. Typically college is either on the weekends or in the off season for me because of mm -hmm. everything that goes on. But mm -hmm. your story, man, is very unique in a lot of ways. And I want to kind of dive into that. But before we do that, I just want to talk about your time at Bunnell because playing in the SWC is no cupcake. It's a yeah. very competitive conference. Mm -hmm. For sure. So just talk to me about playing in the SWC, man. Um, so the SWC, actually, like my freshman year, um, so I didn't play varsity. I just played JV and freshman. And um, it, it kind of every year was kind of the same, you know, big guys, you know, they had teams like uh, Brookfield when, when I was a freshman. They had just won a state championship. Um, New Fairfield. So there were a lot of good teams. Massick was always good every year. So they had a lot of talented teams. And, um, you know, as the years, we always had the talent at Bunnell. Um, it was just more so, you know, we just struggled and battled a lot with injuries over the years, you know, but definitely the, the conference, the SWC conference was definitely strong with Newtown too, played a lot of good guys up there too. You mentioned the injuries and I know yourself as a player, you've mm -hmm. dealt with some injuries, you know, in yeah. your career. Mm -hmm. and did you deal with that early on in your football career at Bunnell? Um, so actually I got kind of like lucky, I would say like blessed in, in the sense that um, at my time at Bunnell, you know, besides a couple ankle sprains here or there, I was like pretty healthy, you know, and I, I had a pretty healthy career there. And then um, my freshman year, which actually was my first time ever like having a major injury of any sort. And I ended up uh, breaking my scaphoid bone in my uh, left wrist. And um, that was like the third game into the season. Yeah, and I was out for the rest of the season and I had some screws put in there. How difficult was that, man? I, again, it's it's a, probably a dumb question. Like, oh, it, it sucked. It's terrible. I hurt my wrist mm -hmm. for the year. But mm -hmm. for a freshman like yourself, like you said, you were splitting time between freshman and JV. Now, mm -hmm. because you were on JV, you were on mm -hmm. the, the, you know, the, you know, you were so close to getting to that varsity level. And yeah, then, so this, this had happened, the injury had happened my freshman year of uh, college. So through, oh, through okay. the four years, yeah, yeah. Okay. So through the first four years, it was just little ankle springs, nothing serious. And then my freshman year, I broke my wrist of college, yeah. Okay, so was, that's good then. I was about to say, yeah. I heard your first yeah. year, that's, that's terrible. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, to go back to the time at Benel, man, mm -hmm. going through your freshman year, sophomore, you know, junior, senior and such, Mm -hmm. When did you start to feel like as a football player that the game did not speed up where you started to kind of just play and let your talent mm -hmm. just eat? Um, so my fresh, actually my freshman year was my first year ever playing football. And, um, you know, I had watched football a little bit growing up, but it was my first year ever. I just did it to condition kind of stay in shape because I wanted to play basketball. And then I ended up really liking it, you know, and falling in love with the sport. And um, I would say probably going into my, uh, this was my junior year. And, um, you know, I started to get my sophomore year split time playing corner, um, split reps the whole year. And then my junior, going into my junior year, I started. And then, um, you know, and then after the junior year, you start to get a little couple of schools notice you, you know, and you start going to camps, attended some camps over the summer of junior year. And then that's when, you know, it started to really click for me. Who? Like, what brought you to the game of football, man? Because you're the second player that's told me, because I was talking to a player a couple of days ago that said, oh, you know, football just kind of freshman year. I just wanted to try it, see how it was. And now mm -hmm. he's a very talented player, has a chance to play mm -hmm. college football. Where, mm -hmm. did, where did football, how did it find you? Actually, so one of my best friends, his name is Jared Davis. And um, I had known him from like middle school. And, you know, we were just kind of talking, you know, and he was just like excited for the freshman football season because he had played Pop Warner. And, um, you know, we were just talking and he was like, yeah, you know, you should play, you know, it helped you stay in shape, you know, and it was kind of fun. Went to a couple of the um, weightlifting's over the summer, you know, some of the conditioning programs they had and, you know, 
just toss the ball, play some seven on seven, you know, like that, and just learn some routes, you know, and I didn't even know what routes were at the time. So, but man. Interesting. Now that's, that's something where I think it's almost like everything happens for a reason. I think yeah, for sure. you know, yeah. if, if you said no to your friend, you yeah. may not be sitting here talking to me. I don't know what you would be doing. Sure, yeah. You'd be a, maybe you'd be a great basketball yeah. player or a track yeah. player. Who knows? But, yeah, we talk about it all the time for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So your freshman year, man, because I think, and I, I could talk about your sophomore, junior, senior, but freshman year to me is huge because mm -hmm. you're, especially for you, being such a, or were a raw talent at the time, you mm -hmm. could be molded in any which way. Was mm -hmm. there any particular coach or player that kind of helped the developmental process for you as a young football player at Benel? Um, As far as the coaches, um, you know, Coach Mignon um, and at the time, and Coach Silas, who was my defensive coordinator at the time at Benel, um, and they had the Thomas brothers who are now, I think, are at Fairfield Prep. They had them over at Bunnell too. So at the time they had realized, you know, that um, I was athletic, you know, but um, at the same time, I just was lacking a lot of fundamentals of the game. I didn't know the game that well. So um, definitely for my freshman year, I spent a lot of time trying to learn the game and watch more of the game. So they definitely exposed me a lot of to concepts and understanding like, like a lot more than just seven on seven and what you see on TV more so just like what terminology meant and a lot of those stuff. So those coaches did a like tremendous job, especially my sophomore year coming back because my freshman year, I was just kind of just playing out there just to play, you know, and then my sophomore year um, came back and, you know, I prepared, I tried to prepare myself, you know, the best I could. I definitely thought I was in for a rude awakening, you know, when we played a lot of those guys, played a lot of good guys. So, but you know, those coaches, Coach Silas, Coach Mignon definitely did a great job of helping me and molding me playing corner, you know, and for sure. Were you the kind of player, man, early on where were you more of somebody that if you were able to watch the film, you knew what mm -hmm. you were doing wrong? Or did you have to be on the field to really understand exactly the footwork, the technique, mm -hmm. watching the wide receivers? I mean, was it mm -hmm. something like that where you need to be on the field to know what you were doing wrong? So early on, for sure, um, it was much more um, physical learning, for sure. And because I didn't know much about the game, you know, I didn't know the rules. There was a lot of things like that, technicalities I didn't know. So, but as I started to get older and I started to know, be around the game more, you know, it just started to get a little bit better to the point where I just had to see it a couple of times done before and then kind of envision myself in the same position, making in those same plays and, you know, and it started to click a little bit. At what point during your career at Benel did you start to realize, think that, hey, I have a chance to be able to play beyond just Benel. I could play in college. When did that start to hit you? Um, it started to hit me probably um, going into my senior year, actually, because, um, you know, at first I, I hadn't really given it too much thought. I just thought, you know, just we're going to see how far this goes, you know, how far I could take it. And then I had met Coach Derasmo. Um, he was coaching a seven on seven team and uh, called CT's Finest at the time. And we had we had a couple of travels, seven on seven tournaments down in Maryland, a couple of different places, you know. And I got a chance to be exposed to a lot of guys and a lot of different talent from across the country, as opposed to just, you know, the SWC and what we were seeing in CT. So it gave me a great opportunity to kind of measure myself, especially because at the time, you know, when you're 17, 16, you're a lot of the thought process is how well do I stack up against these guys that I'm watching on TV or these guys who have all these great offers. So it definitely gave me my scene going into my senior year, a good grasp of, you know, how far I was and how much I was lacking for sure. I'm not shocked that coach Durasmo, Michael Durasmo, a young man who I went to school with, graduated high school with, has an eye for defense because yeah. he was a fantastic player at Sacred Heart, was a mm -hmm. part of, albeit there was not a, you know, a lot of winning at Sacred Heart, he was a part of two successful seasons mm -hmm. at Sacred Heart. And I think to be able to find you, but you know, to end the point on Benel really quick before we get to your college career, because mm -hmm. Anna Maria was not the first place you were at. No. Um, and we'll get into that in just a second. I just want to ask mm -hmm. you about, and I don't know if you've been paying attention to what's been going on at Benel, but or who the new head coach is and has been mm -hmm. for years, Coach Jenkins. Yeah. He mm -hmm. has, I've had him on a few times. I keep in contact with him when I can. 
what he's doing, man, as far as building the foundation. And like he always says on Twitter, or even when I talk to him, brick mm -hmm. by brick, baby. That's what mm -hmm. he's doing. And as someone who's a former alum, even though he didn't play for him, mm -hmm. you, like what is your thoughts on what's going on at Benel right now? So I've actually been um, fortunate to have a lot of conversations with Coach Jenkins, even though he didn't coach me personally. Um, you know, he had reached out a couple of times after we had graduated and he had got the position, you know, letting us know that um, he was around, you know, if we needed anything, you know, not to scared to reach out if he wanted to come to the games, you know, and stuff. And, you know, along that process of talking to him and um, having conversations with him, it was really clear, you know, that um, a lot of the goals and the values kind of even for myself that I hold down as far as um, being ground built and building from the ground, you know, and he really envisioned a plan where, you know, a lot of people probably told him he was crazy, you know, that it wasn't going to work out, you know, but definitely, I definitely see a lot of the stuff, you know, and when I went to school, I started to see the jerseys, you know, then I started to see them in the Rip It and Grip It Challenge, and I started to see a lot more different positive things, you know, but he's definitely doing a, a heck of a job over there, for sure. He's a visionary, and I, I don't yeah. know if he believes me when I say that, but the way he the way he thinks and the, the, the way he goes about his business as far as mm -hmm. being able to, like when I had him on for the first time, he wasn't talking about wins or losses. He was talking about players and about getting them to the community, mm -hmm. trying to have them go not just within the community, but also the school, making sure that they showed their faces, uh, you know, to basketball games or volleyball mm -hmm. games, making sure they sat in the front of the row, trying to be able to, you know, present and have them be, well as far as you know like i said in the classroom and in the community and such and i think that is so huge to see beyond just the wins and the losses and to be able to reach out to you man as a former alum even though he didn't coach you yeah that, for sure that was big yeah huge, right mm -hmm, for sure for sure you know i, I definitely think? felt like um you know he didn't have to he didn't he didn't know me at all you know just reached out you know and i even upon um, going to Benel a couple of times to train. I had seen them by, you know, a couple of times during their, they had, I believe it was like a little spring season or something like that, you know, like a little passing thing. And um, just seeing the passion that he he had, you know, to coach these guys, because not everybody on that team is, is a college football player, you know what I mean? But the passion to coach them to get better, you know, and have the vision of them getting better every day and to produce great young men, you know, Pat, much more, much more past the game of football. So. Now, obviously, you know, you had an opportunity to be able to play college football. Now, mm -hmm. talk to me about the journey, because your journey is like many, I think, where you dealt with adversity, both on mm -hmm. and off the field. So just talk about yeah. that. Um, so, you know, my journey's definitely been um, different, you know, in a lot of ways, but I've definitely embraced it and embellished it because... Um, it's given me a much more creative and a much more greater story, you know, and a lot bigger appreciation for the game of football as well, you know, so the places that it's been able to take me as far as, you know, the different lessons that it's taught me within myself, you know, I learned a lot about who I was as an individual, but also who, who I could become, what I was capable of and how far I had to go, you know, um, so especially when you deal with injury, it's not easy, so during my career, early in my career, you know, I dealt with a lot of injury. And at first, you know, you deal with a lot of frustration. Then you deal with a lot of disappointment. Then you deal with a lot of kind of, I'll say sometimes, you know, you go through a little depression, you know, the game's missing, you know, and you're like, I just want to play, you know, but definitely learning time, patience. And also too, it, it served me a great lesson to understand the preparation, the importance of preparation, because when I was young, you know, I was just athletic. So I felt like, the preparation into my own body, as far as the things that I was putting into my body, the ways that I was stretching, you know, a lot of the other things, the, even the weight room, you know, I felt like I was working hard, but maybe just not the attention to detail wasn't there, you know, because I hadn't really, you know, gone through much yet. So me going to Southern and really those first couple of years really helped mold me and really change my mentality to where it was as a young man, but now developing, you know, and understanding the adversity, the things that you go through, the challenges, you know, so it's definitely taught me a lot. What was your decision to depart from Southern? Um, so my decision was really COVID definitely hit me big because it gave me definitely a different perspective. So 
uh, well, a shift in perspective. Like, um, so I had gone to school and when COVID had happened, we had gone home. And so I went home, you know, and spent a lot of time with my parents, you know, and within a lot of the time, I also spent a lot of time thinking back on my career so far, as well as where I want to be. And, you know, I had dreams and aspirations of playing in the NFL. And so I felt um, I was very far from where I wanted to be, but trying to kind of nitpick and get to the bottom of it, of why I was far from where I wanted to be, you know, and a lot of it had to do with kind of also to where I was back home. It was so close to my home. So I felt like me being at home, there were so many distractions that I had dealt with within my own self, you know, sometimes going back home, but even while being at Southern, you know, not to any of the coaches fault or any of the programs fault, but just my own mental space, you know, and where I was as a young adult, I felt um, out of focus, you know, and at, at, when I first went to school, the goals that I had set in mind, I felt like I wasn't up to par and I wasn't accomplishing those goals or even putting in the, the proper process. So upon taking that back and rethinking and reevaluating, I felt like it was definitely time for me and my family to look at a fresh start, you know, and a different opportunity for me to make those things happen, you know. How humbling was it, man, because of the level which Southern plays at? And then to, and I'm not, I don't know if you knew that you were going to end up in Anna Maria. We'll get to yeah. that in a second, man. But just how humbling was that for you to kind of know that the level mm -hmm. was going to be a little bit farther, you know, it was going to be Division Three, but mm -hmm. for you, you have aspirations and you want to be able to play or play as long as you can. And your uh -huh. level definitely supersedes, I think, playing at Division Three. But mm -hmm. you felt like dropping down to that level was mm -hmm. good for you. Why was that? Yeah. So um, initially, my thought focus, you know, was put in the work, um, you know, necessary. And so for the whole entire year, I didn't know where I was going to end up after I had opted into the portal. And, you know, I didn't have the best of grades. So I had, you know, just about the grades to be able to be in the transfer portal, you know, but um, I realized quickly as I hopped into the transfer portal, you know, a lot of the the politics, you know, and a lot of also to the, the different uh, things that go into play when it comes to choosing a school and selecting a school, which I never had give, given thought in the first place. You know, a lot of the different aspirations, different goals, even past football, like business goals, you know, and, and also things like that, connections, I had never given much thought. So upon hopping into the transfer portal, you know, it definitely gave me a lot of times to think, you know, I probably emailed and called about every single coach I could, you know, and, you know, sent them my tape, you know, my huddle and everything. Um, I was working out every day, 4.30 with my trainer back home. Um, actually, he was one of the coaches at Sacred Heart, uh, Tommy, um, Coach Thomas. He has a speed school up, up in Waterbury. You know, I was working out with him 4.30 in the morning and really trying to mold myself into what I thought because I felt like I was a Division One athlete, but into, you know, into that position. But also, too, along the journey, I really learned a lot because, um, you know, once things didn't start to go the way that I thought they were going to go, I started to learn a lot about myself because, you know, you hear a lot of the outside noise. And even right now, Coach Mo preaches a lot of the times, you know, don't listen about the outside noise. You know, all you have is the people that truly believe in you. So a lot of my friends and my plans, you know, they understood what my plans were, you know, but trying to figure out and find the best place you know that could make that happen and you know when I went on my visit um coach Erasmo that I knew you know he coaches up here so he had hit me up when I was in the portal was like hey man you know um have a great opportunity for you if you'd want to like hear it out you know and stuff like that so coach Mo had uh DM me on Twitter you know and we started to exchange talk you know and then it was like hey you know face-to-face -face conversation so I came here had about a two two hour meeting with him you know and just he was one of the most down-to-earth guys I met and he really just you know gave me a different shift in perspective a lot too on on a lot of things that I was looking at as far as the division three division two game you know and explaining to him because he's been around a lot of greats you know and he's been around the game of football for a little while so him having the opportunity to really uh kind of break down everything to me you know and letting me know that if my goals and my aspirations were the NFL you know it wasn't about what school or where I was it was about who I was and what type of talent I was and who I was as a person, you know, and, and I'll get found. So, yeah, you know, that, that was definitely a humbling experience, but nonetheless, I felt like it definitely gave me a different fire to every day, you know, every day that I practice every day that, you know, we're at conditioning, you know, and even more so now every game, you know, because 
every game just feels that much more bigger, you know, because it's a lot more personal. So a couple of things real quick. And you gave me a lot. I think that entire story, man, was brilliant. Uh, you talked about the speed coach from Waterbury, Coach Tommy. You talking about Thomas Allen, correct? Yeah, Thomas Allen. Yeah, I know him very well. He coached at Sacred Heart for a number of, a number of years. I think now he's at Watertown. Uh, yeah. something I know. Very down to earth guy. Knows football. Knows defense. Yeah. You know, when I talked the first time I talked to him because we were mm-hmm. doing the Sacred Heart game. Yeah. I can talk defense with that dude for hours. The way he sure. sees the game, he's from Philly, I think, too. Yeah, he but is. Remember, yeah. He just sees he just sees things that I'm like, how do you, how do how do you see that? Please mm-hmm. show me. Yeah. <laughs> and that had to be sure, good for yeah. you because you're you're a DB, you're a free safety. Yeah. You could pick his mind because I remember when mm-hmm. I talked to him and he said, "Oh, we went up against like Will Fuller and all." That. I'm like, "Oh, mm-hmm. the guy who's in the NFL." Okay. Yeah. Interesting. So you must have picked yeah. his brain. Um, yeah, that was probably one of the best things that probably, you know, happened to me, especially within me forming a relationship with uh, Coach Tommy. And, you know, he's been a, like a big mentor, but also to a guy that, you know, within our relationship, you know, he's like one of my best friends, but he's also like one of my biggest critics, you know what I mean? So being able to have him in the gym, whether it's we're in conditioning, whether we're working field work, whether I'm squatting, whatever it is, and having him down to the T, having him inspect everything from your form to how low you are in your back pedal to each each step, you know, and everything that you don't do, everything that you do. And it builds kind of a standard as well within your own self, having a guy like that. So he definitely helped me a lot this past year, for sure. I think the preparation being with him, man, I think allowed you because – just in the short time, you know, I've talked to Coach Mulroney a few times on the podcast. Mm-hmm. Just kind of be like, hey, you know, hope all is well, whatever. I'm not trying to bother him. I know he's busy. Yeah. But just knowing his pedigree, coming yeah. from what he did at Holy Cross where he won, mm-hmm. then going to BC, winning again, going to Stonebrook, yep. winning mm-hmm. it. Like, he, wherever he goes, you kind of see winning happens. Yeah, so no, then for sure. Him going to Anna Maria, and I told him, when I had him on during when the when the quarantine was just happening, we all had to stay mm-hmm. at our houses. We couldn't go anywhere. Mm-hmm. And I said, when you guys get back on the field, within the next two years, I think you guys are going to pop. And yep. I gave him the reasons why. And he, you know, I, I could tell he kind of thought like things were going to happen, man. And then seeing what you guys mm-hmm. have done this year, two and one, best star, I think, in program history, if I remember right. Yep. Mm-hmm. I'm not surprised by that. And did like... Did his did his track record, his resume attract you, Tana Maria? Um, his track resume definitely attracted me, but also too more so um, kind of just the way that he is as a man. You know, he's like looks you straight in the eye, you know, through your soul kind of, and he'll tell you what it is for what it is. So it's definitely one of the things that really attracted me was him being upfront and honest, you know, and understanding even for myself, like, Um, as good of a talent that I was understanding that nothing was going to be given to me that I was going to have to come here from day one and and work my tail off you know to if I wanted an opportunity to step on the field so now for sure definitely and um, his passion the way that he attacks the game you know he's loses a lot of nights of sleep even while my short time being here seeing the way that he attacks the game with the detail that he attacks it is different do you think I'm sure you're not the only one that sees that does that kind of, when you see how much he's putting in, he's putting it, mind you, he has a wife. He has basically, not a newborn, but he has a, he has a baby. He has a very young child, you know, yep. and you see what he's putting in on top of having his family life. When yep. you guys see that, does that rub off on you where it's like if you're struggling either in the weight room or if you're having a, a crappy practice and you're just like, you know, you could sit back for a second and say, hey, I got to wake up. I got to pick this up because you know what? Coach Mulroney is dealing with a lot of stuff between at home. He's mm-hmm. not sleeping. He's putting yep. in 180,000% for us. I yep. think he's thinking that. No, without a doubt. Um, so for myself, especially me being around him this short time, it's definitely rubbed off a lot on me. And I can tell a lot on the other kids as well. But from my perspective, definitely a lot of it is kind of for myself, time management. And also, you know, controversial you know a lot of people say that you need a lot of sleep you know you need this but he's definitely a guy that I know doesn't sleep a lot you know and he definitely he's definitely made me look at the attention to be great and what it takes to be great at a different altitude and a different pace you know what I mean every 
every play, every special teams, you know, and understanding how every single step matters from the time that you walk on the field, from the way that you dress, et cetera, et cetera, you know, so it's definitely rubbed off on a lot. Now, when you got to Anna Marie's campus, what was, who was the first player or person that kind of helped you? Because obviously when you go to a new place, regardless mm-hmm. if you're a freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, mm-hmm. super senior, whatever, it, it, it takes you a little bit to get acclimated. It's almost like you're mm-hmm. beginning your first day of school in high school again, or mm-hmm. when you were younger. Mm-hmm. Who kind of helped you along the way to kind of get your feet wet? So um, I actually had, again, a, a lot luckier than a lot of people because um, my quarterback from Southern Connecticut, actually, Matty Shapiro, he transferred over here with me. So he was one of the first guys, you know, even when I was thinking about the decision I had told, you know, and um, upon me transferring, when I came here, you know, from day one and, you know, actually the first day I just felt kind of lost. You know, I did feel kind of lost, like I was a freshman all over again. But, you know, just um, Coach D and being around the guys and the fact that, um, you know, you, you for the most part, you guys are the only people on campus, you know what I mean? So that, and then um, a couple of the other players like Jude Sampson, um, Elijah, um, a couple of them, I got the opportunity to train with them over the summer at um, Coach Tommy's gym. So I had built a little bit of a bond with them over the summer, you know, so it kind of just carried into the season. I got to ask you too, before I let you go, and I really do, you know, it's great to be able to have you on and I love being able to have Anna Maria on here. I don't want to bother Mulrooney or Durasmo or, Kingsley or any of them to come on because they're busy not sleeping. They're busy trying yeah. to game plan. Yeah. But I just want to ask you, because a former player who I saw for a number of years at Woodland, now he's at <coughs> Anna Maria, uh, mm-hmm. Tyler Belinsky, former quarterback. Yeah. Now he's playing quarterback for Anna Maria. How mm-hmm. is he doing and how, I mean, you probably have gone up against him on the yeah. defensive side. Yeah. How has he looked? Just be yeah. honest with me because I'm sure. Yeah. So um, you know, Tyler, Tyler's actually – growing at a very fast pace so he's really young but I think what also helps him is that quarterback room is super talented you know and they have a lot of guys that um, are from a lot of different places a lot of different age groups so I think that especially coming into the season you know the, the quarterback position was wide open so there were so many guys that you know at any given moment could get the job done so I think that's helped him grow a lot but he's looked you know really good and he's really young so there's a lot of things that he has to learn about the game still but the future is definitely really bright, you know, and he's definitely got a lot of ways to go, but the future is definitely bright. No, I can't let you go before I say, no, you're a business major and yeah. you are a senior, but you are planning on coming back for your master's. Yeah. Now, do you continue to be playing football during your year while you're doing your master's? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I will. Okay. That's no, that's great. And I, I just, yeah. for people who were wondering because, oh, you know, yeah, like, yeah. who's he going to play? But is your mm-hmm. goal... Still, because we saw, I mean, look, a couple of years ago, the Patriots drafted a division three player, a defense, yes. a, 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 you know, a defensive player. Is your mm-hmm. aspiration still to play in the NFL? So my aspiration is still to play in the NFL. But um, so truthfully, even within inspecting my own game, I feel like with the two years that I had off because of COVID, you know, and this off year that we didn't have, I felt like I still had a lot to put on tape, but also a lot for myself to get better at. So within my own technique, you know, every day, because um, even the safety position is fairly new to me. I just started playing when I was a senior in high school. That was my first year playing safety. So kind of just really sharpening my tools and, and giving myself another opportunity, another year, you know, and I'm still focused on this year, you know, and making sure that we take care of the task at hand, but also to every game, every opportunity is a new learning experience, you know, and so I feel like Although I am a senior, you know, as far as the games and the way that COVID has turned out, I am really, like, young and and experienced, you know, and I feel like I definitely want to gain a lot more experience and really sharpen my tools before I start to give that some real thought. And the more reps that you get, the better off you're going to be. And like you just said, once once that talent gets to the same level of where you are right now, because I know you're putting in the work. I know what you're doing with Derasmo and Coach Allen Mm -hmm. and all them and, you know, Mulrooney and all that. When that comes together, man, and I feel like it's going to at some point. Like I told Mulrooney about the team popping. You're close. I've watched the film when I when I was able to. It's there. You, just the consistency, man. And once it's there, and once that light goes on, especially for a defense player, you know, a defensive player like yourself, a safety corner, you need confidence, especially going yeah. up against those wide receivers. Yeah. You know, they're yeah. cocky as you know what. 
When you mm-hmm. got that confidence, once it goes on, it doesn't go off. I mean, look at Diggs, Trayvon Diggs for the Cowboys. He struggled mm-hmm. his, his rookie year because of the COVID, not having practice. Look what he's mm-hmm. doing this year. He, yep. He's picking every single game. And mm-hmm. you know what I noticed too? He's cocky. He was talking, you know what, to Hurts, his former team at Alabama. Yeah. Once you have that confidence, it's hard to go away. And I think once you get that man consistency wise, you're good. 100%. 100%. But you know, man, I really do appreciate you coming on. I hope to have you back on in the future. And, you know, hopefully, Anna Maria, love to be able to talk about you guys getting into the playoffs. Mm-hmm. I'm hoping for that. I, I agree. Thank you for having me. I really do appreciate you. No problem, man. Anytime. That wrap things up with the Connecticut Sports Talent Show. So until next time, stay safe. Remember, CT stands for Connecticut Talent. I'm not dreaming of finding them all. Enjoy the rest of your day, everybody, and be well.